This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Keep watching for an exclusive offer for my subscribers from Skillshare. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and today we're taking my Arduino project from our last episode and building this. Welcome back everybody. One thing that I really need to get better at on this channel is taking my Arduino projects and applying them to actual model railroads. So I need to figure out a way to do that with my last Arduino project. So today we are going to build a little diorama with the Arduino project and just make it look really neat and just really use some of the skills that we've practiced. And if you're looking for more skills that you can learn, you can check out our sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Now, there are quite a few classes that you can try. For instance, I'm still learning some new stuff with Arduino, as well as painting backdrops, because that's something I'm going to be working on soon, and you can check those out. There's a lot of cool classes. If you're looking for anything to get into more photography and videography of your layout, there's a lot of cool classes there. And Skillshare is specifically curated for learning, which means there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. No matter what your skill level is, Skillshare has a class for you. And right now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Seriously, guys, go check it out. It's a pretty awesome thing they got going on over there. All right, guys, let's go ahead and hop into the build of this little diorama. I will be building this diorama on an IKEA LAC TV stand. I did omit the bottom shelf in the build. I'm going to put a layer of extruded foam on top to stand as the base. Now I need to cut this to size. The way I did this is I simply scored and snapped the sheet of foam. I then used a latex caulk to secure it down and I weighed it down and let it dry overnight. Next, I needed to drill some holes for the wiring of the sensors and the track power. I bring in the section of track that's going to run on the diorama and then I use a sharpie to mark the spots that I need to drill. I then use a quarter inch drill bit to drill the holes. Once this was done, I grabbed the diorama, took it down to the garage, grabbed a can of brown spray paint, and spray painted the foam. And I ended up deciding to spray paint the entire diorama this color so that it had a cleaner look. Once that was done, it was time to install the electronics, which I will be securing to the underside of the table with hot glue. Hot glue is really great for this because it's easy to use and it's non-conductive, so it holds these parts really, really well. I'm going to use this four position terminal strip as my five volt power bus for the Arduino since I have multiple things being powered by the Arduino itself. I start by hooking my wires from the Arduino to the bus itself. I then wire up the rotary potentiometer for the speed control. If you want to see how I designed the electronics for this build, you can check my previous video where I built and coded this entire project. Next, I connect all the wires to and from the motor driver. I need to connect the control pins as well as the 5 volt output from the motor driver to power the Arduino. This will make it to where I only have to plug one power cable in to run the entire diorama. I then use hot glue to secure the DuPont connector pins, which is a great way to hold these connectors onto a component. Next, I need to install the resistor and I'm using it as a little jumper between the ground connection of the potentiometer and the ground connection of the Arduino. Now it's time for some sensor work. 
I am using these extra long DuPont connector wires and I'll link them in the description below. I connect the wires to my sensors first. Then it is time to run the wires through the baseboard to connect with the electronics. The first one I feed through is actually the track feeder and that's gonna to connect to the number one motor output on the motor driver. This wire is pretty thick so it's able to just feed straight through with relative ease. The sensor wires though are another story. They are pretty thin and this TV stand is actually hollow in the middle and it's pretty easy for them to get snagged and bend off inside really easily. So to run the wires, I line the ends up back to back long ways and tape them to a bamboo skewer. I make sure the pins are all lined up directly behind the stub end of the skewer and seal them all in with painter's tape so it essentially just makes a longer extension of the skewer. I then push the skewer through the hole which threads the wires through very easily. Once those are through, I connect all of the wires to the power connections as well as the sensor inputs on the Arduino. If you need to see where to connect all of these wires, you can check out my previous video and I'll also link a schematic in the description. Next, I connect the track feeders to the number one motor terminal. Now, if the train doesn't run properly, you may need to adjust these wires, which is something you're gonna see me have an issue with in a bit. Now, I can test the track. I push the train back to the starting point, and as you can see, it is working properly. I will have to adjust the sensor sensitivity though using the knobs on the sensors. Once that's done and everything is working, I use hot glue to secure down the track. Now you guys know that I typically use latex caulk to secure down Kato Unitrack, but with this diorama it's so small that it's very easy to use hot glue for this. I also use hot glue on the holes that the sensors are wired through. This will lock all of the wires in place as well as hold the sensor in place itself. Now for the station platforms. I need three simple platforms that will also hide the sensors. Now I'll go ahead and tell you it's not going to be a very subtle hide, but I just whip up some basic platforms in Tinkercad and print them out with my resin printer. Once the parts are printed and cleaned, I test fit them to make sure they work, and then I use some gray spray paint to give them a concrete look. While those are drying, I need to make the roads and parking lots. For these, I'll be using foam sheets that, where I buy them at Hobby Lobby, are called Silly Winks. If you're looking to make some simple asphalt roads, these things are really like a cheat code for roads. They're flexible, they have some texture, and they're easy to weather. I even use them on my T-Track module that I built a few months back. I cut them all to size and cut out the sections for the sensors to fit and then I just use white glue to glue them in place. The nice thing about these is that you can snug them right up against the track for the grade crossings.
Once the foam was glued down and the stations were dry, I grabbed the station platforms and I just used some white glue again to secure them to the foam mats. Now I finally solder my feeder connections, and you can use something like a terminal unijoiner if you want. I just had this wire lying around and I decided to solder it in place. Once all this is done, it's time for another test. And this time I actually had an issue. You can see that the train takes off in the opposite direction. There are several ways that you can remedy this. The easiest way is to reverse the wire connections on the motor driver. So you just flip them to the opposite terminal from what they were in. This will make the train run the opposite way with the same command, and you can see that it fixes it right up. Now it's time for some scenery. I begin by spreading white glue around the areas that I'm working on. I'm very careful not to get any white glue on the roads. You want to make sure that you don't do that. The base layer is Woodland Scenic's Fine Turf Earth Blend. Once the entire diorama is covered in the blended earth turf, I come back with some Woodland Scenics blended turf and I spread it around giving it kind of a brownish greenish look. Now I am not going over the top on scenery, which means I'm not going to ballast this track. I want it to be able to work simply and smoothly as possible. So rather than ballasting, I have a different way of hiding the seams of the Kato Yuna track. I'm going to put some bushes just along the edge of the base of the roadbed. And I do this by just running a simple bead of white glue and attaching all of the bushes right along the edge. I use a similar technique along the edges of the roads and parking lots, but instead of using bushes, I use some of Woodland Scenic's coarse turf, and that can really get into an underbrush or very subtle bush look that's going to be a little bit lower than the actual bushes that I'm using around the track, and I really like the way that this looks because it smooths out where the edges of the foam are into the terrain. Once that is done, I go ahead and take some more of that coarse turf and I just liberally spread it around the area. If you don't have an area that's supposed to look like groomed landscape, this is a very easy way to get that rough, thick, underbrushy look on your landscaping is just to spread some of this uh, coarse turf around. I then soak all the scenic areas with some isopropyl alcohol. You're gonna to want to use either 70% or 90%. 90% is definitely preferable, but 70% will work. And then I use my homemade scenic cement, which is just a 50-50 white glue water mixture. Now the IPA will let that glue soak and spread out into all the scenery and get it nice and glued down tight. But while it's drying, I'm taking some of these pre-made trees and I'm just sticking them in the foam so that I can just add a little bit of foliage and trees and interest to the diorama. 
The last thing that I did was take some of this black construction paper and cut it to size for the grade crossing. This is another little cheat code that looks really great and is easy to weather and is really easy for anyone to do. Now that it's dry, let's give it a test run. I built this little diorama for two main reasons. One was to show you how to apply the Arduino project that we did last week. And the other one was to show you that you don't need a huge amount of space to do model railroading, or you don't need to be able to hand build bench work or anything like that to do model railroading. I built this on an Ikea TV stand and it'll fit virtually anywhere. So I hope this is some inspiration. If you're looking for another compact railroad that you can build, I've also done one where I built one in a two foot by four foot space. It's in scale. I will link that right up here as well at the end of the video. And I wanna say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month a lot of cool stuff going on there including a model of the month for the five dollar a month level that's it for today guys remember to check those videos out at the end if you want to see some more cool projects as well as the arduino project that led to this video until next time i'm jimmy from the diy and digital stay safe be kind and happy railroading i'm back everybody today we are nope that's not it for the no right now the first one Welcome back, everybody. Today we are doing something really exciting.